let's move on now to, to the last 12 weeks and uh, the weeks ahead. Because at this point, here you are, the last day before the holiday break. Uh, but really, you leave without passing your government's own signature gun bill. Uh, has the amendment on assault weapons undermined the original intent of banning that handgun bill? Uh, no. I, I think that what's happened is we've, we've uh, opened up an important conversation on, uh, on, on two uh, very sensitive fronts that are incredibly important. On the one hand, uh, we have those that have been victimized by gun crime, uh, who've lost loved ones, uh, who are themselves been victims, um, who are uh, demanding action to ensure that uh, weapons that are capable of mass destruction, weapons that are, um, are, are uh, assault style uh, weapons, uh, are taken off the streets. And we all need to be able to look at the victims of gun violence in the eyes and say that we've done everything that we can. And that's an important piece of that. Uh, on, at the same token, uh, we know uh, how important hunting is uh, as, a, uh, as something that's an essential part of the life of so many Canadians, uh, not just in a contemporary sense, but over many generations. My grandfather was a hunter. Uh, and we know that hunters want to make sure that they can continue um, that, uh, that lifestyle uh, that's so important to them and such an important part of, uh, of Canada. And so uh, and there's a lot of sensitivity there to make sure uh, that they're not impacted and their ability to hunt isn't impacted. Uh, those two things are, are, are in no way contradictory. Uh, and I think this is a moment and an opportunity to step back and make sure that we do get these assault style weapons off the street uh, and that we don't allow it to impact hunters. And so there's an important conversation that I think is taking place at committee and it's going to take place with stakeholders over the, the next coming months. And as so often the case in Parliament when we're dealing with very contentious issues, it takes some time to find that middle ground and it takes conversations and, it, and you have to work through um, the, the sensitivities that are there. And so that's what's happening. That's, I think, very appropriate in this instance uh, and I think that good progress is being made. Mm -hmm. As you say, talked about um, amongst committee members, but, but certainly some members do want this whole bill to go back for further study. Will that happen in the new year? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we're looking at amendments uh, and how we can uh, make changes uh, to make sure that uh, any guns that are used in hunting are not um, captured um, uh, in the legislation that's brought forward, uh, making sure that we're talking to stakeholders to combat a lot of disinformation that's out of there, frankly, about the bill. Um, you know, I, I think there are those that are actively looking for solutions, and I would suggest that there are those that are looking for problems and to exacerbate uh, this for political advantage. And given the sensitivities that I just spoke about, um, uh, I, I, I think that's highly inappropriate. I, I think that it's very important for us to focus on solutions, and uh, that's very much where our mind is as we work through this. Mm -hmm. Now, you've heard the criticism, and, and I hear what you're saying right now, but uh, one of the criticisms has been, or at least one of the questions has been, is why did the government not consult more broadly before actually bringing forward this amendment at, at what's been described as the 11th hour. Uh, did the government fumble there? Should it have uh, consulted more broadly? Well, I think, you know, uh, that's for others to ask. I mean, I, I think what we're focused on is finding solutions. Uh, and, uh, and, and I don't know any, uh, any government uh, at any point in time uh, that's dealt with highly contentious issues um, that, that didn't have uh, have to take some time to, to consider uh, all of the different uh, uh, stakeholder groups uh, and opinions um, that are incumbent within that. And so uh, that's a natural part of the process. Uh, the, uh, this is a complicated uh, and difficult situation uh, that it, where uh, it is absolutely essential that we take action. Uh, and so as we move through this process, uh, making sure that we listen, uh, that we react to feedback, um, that we ensure that we're, we're getting it right uh, is a part of what we want to do uh, with, with everything that we're doing legislatively. Um, and, uh, you know, I think mistakes are, uh, in my experience in life, uh, mistakes are when uh, you don't listen to feedback, um, when you don't, uh, when you refuse to act, uh, when information is put in front of you, and when you uh, move forward and do something uh, without considering uh, the implications of it. And, that, and that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're, we're taking, a step, um, uh, taking a step back, making sure the legislation has gotten right. We have a clear, uh, as I've articulated, a clear understanding of what our priorities are here. Um, so, you know, we're going to make sure that we get it done right. Mm -hmm. I also want to talk about...